On the cusp of gaming's comeback, there were many standout titles on the Nintendo Entertainment System. By 1987, it was clear that video games were not going to die. Thanks mostly in part to the NES and the Sega Master System, with games like Super Mario Bros. and Alex Kidd respectively. Although these titles gave gamers hope of a bright future, it was a little blue upstart that took things unexpectedly to a different level altogether. Known as the Blue Bomber, and seen as an unlikely hero not only in his own game's plot, but also in the real world of gaming development, a robot humanoid shook things up and made doubters into believers. This is the nostalgic look back at Mega Man. Mega Man. Welcome to Old School Roots, where we dissect retro games and gaming subjects. A show that's half fact, half nostalgia, and all gaming. Join us as we take a trip back to the golden era of gaming. This is it, Old School Rules. Mega Man, known as Rockman in Japan, is an action platform video game developed and published by Capcom for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Mega Man was released on December 17, 1987 in Japan, and localized for North American release in December 1987, selling for $49.99 USD. In the year 20XX, the genius Dr. Thomas Light and his assistant, Dr. Albert W. Wiley, co-create the humanoid robot Mega Man, alongside six other advanced robots, Cuts Man, Guts Man, Ice Man, Bomb Man, Fire Man, and Elect Man. These robots were designed to perform industrial tasks, including construction, demolition, logging, electrical operations, or labor in extreme temperatures for the benefit of Monsteropolis citizens. Dr. Wiley grows jealous of his partner and reprograms these six robots to aid him in taking control of the world. Dr. Light sends Mega Man to defeat his fellow creations and stop Dr. Wiley. After succeeding, Mega Man returns home to his robot sister Ro and their creator, Dr. Light. Mega Man consists of six side-scrolling platformer levels freely chosen by the player. In this respect, it is one of the first well-known non-linear video games. On each level, the player character, Mega Man, fights through various enemies and obstacles before facing a robot master or boss at the level's end. Upon defeating the boss, the player assimilates the Robot Master's signature attack into Mega Man's arsenal for the rest of the game. Unlike the standard blaster, the Robot Master's powers have a limited amount of ammunition, replenished by collecting ammunition cells dropped by defeated enemies at random. Enemies also drop energy cells that replenish Mega Man's health gauge. While the player is free to proceed through the game in any order, each robot master is especially vulnerable to a specific weapon, which encourages the player to complete certain stages before others. The player can also revisit cleared stages. When all six robot master stages are completed, the seventh and last stage appears in the middle of the stage select menu. This stage, known as Wally's Fortress, is a chain of four regular stages linked together each containing at least one new boss. During these final stages, the six robot masters must also be fought again in a predetermined order before the final confrontation against Dr. Wily. 
In the mid-1980s, Capcom made plans to develop Mega Man specifically for the Japanese home console market. The development team for Mega Man consisted of only six people. Artist K.J. Ifune designed and illustrated nearly all of Mega Man's game characters and enemies. Ifune was influenced by the famous protagonist anime hero, Astro Boy. Mega Man was a title that was never given a large advertising push. When the first title was released, not many American gamers knew of its existence. At a time where there was no widely used internet or a search engine, games like Mega Man solely relied upon word of mouth. This, fortunately for Kamkin, worked like a charm as the game's awful and widely mocked cover art shunned most gamers away from it. Once a young gamer tried out the game, he or she would tell a friend about it. This was a customary practice of how most games succeeded in that time space. Mega Man confused many gamers as their experience with it was usually without the game's manual. Often booting the game up and thinking that the on-screen bosses were characters to choose from instead of being stage bosses. Once a gamer grasped the game's premise, it was safe to say most were hooked on the solid gameplay, awesome music, and smooth graphics. Beyond those things, the game had a charm that locked players in. This charm was the game's gameplay, which was inspired by the game's rock, paper, scissors method. More specifically, each weapon deals a large amount of damage to one specific robot master. Others have little to no effect against them, and there is no single weapon that dominates all others. So if a player, through trial and error, found this out, it made for interesting and never before seen elements in a side-scrolling platform game. The game was also notorious for its huge difficulty. You start with three lives, and as you take damage, it is reflected on screen on your health meter. When Mega Man's health meter is either depleted, he falls on spikes, or into a pit, the game is over. When all three lives are used up, the player has two options. Start over from the beginning, or as in later games, use a unique password system. The latter of the two was not used in most games at the time, but implemented as many games did not have a continue option or game saves like modern games. The simple but deep gameplay made it hard to put this game down. The story, which was becoming popular in games, also aided in the overall charm. All this has garnered Mega Man various honors from video game journals and websites. <laughs> While Mega Man was not a large commercial accomplishment for Capcom, the company decided to allow the development team to create a sequel, Mega Man 2 for 1998 Japanese release. Many of the design elements cut from the original Mega Man were included in the follow-up game. Mega Man 2 proved to be such a success that it solidified Mega Man as one of Capcom's longest-running franchises. Many credit the level select feature of Mega Man as the basis for the non-linear mission instructions found in most multi-mission, open-world side quest heavy games, such as Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption, and Saints Row. Mega Man has several TV shows, anime, and even appears in other Nintendo games such as Super Smash Bros. With this game still in production and the series returning to its 8-bit roots for the 9 and 10 sequels, the Mega Man series shows no signs of slowing down. For those fortunate enough to have experienced his first game, it's safe to say no one wants to see the Blue Bomber depart from gaming anytime soon. From his time as an unknown 8-bit underdog, to his rise as flagship mascot for Capcom, the battle for not only peace, but also real-world fame has been a somewhat non-linear journey for the little blue hero. Mega Man has seen other heroes of his genre come and go, all while cranking out solid hit after hit. 
perhaps a testament to his heroic, undying, never give up design. All things said and done, Mega Man's invention has been undeniably helpful to the world of gaming. And as his first game puts it, fight Mega Man for everlasting peace. That's it for this episode of Old School Rules. Join us here at Gaming Soul Spectacular next time as we cover the nostalgia of gaming announcements. Thanks for watching everybody. And as usual, if you can't be good, be good at it.